This might not look like much, but this is the product of a month of work and more months of student planning on top of that when it came to designing and building our climate battery. Let's check out how we got to this point. Awkward. In our last greenhouse video, we talked about how and why we were trying to meet some of our heat storage needs. Over the last month, we were tackling one of our larger energy projects, the construction of our climate battery. A lot of the planning and calculations were done by our students using the climate battery calculator and the principles that are free to access on ecosystemdesigns.com. We'll make sure that the link is down below, uh, and this tool is super easy to use and helpful for sizing everything from your fan, to your manifolds, to the number of smaller runs that you'll actually need. Our first step was to excavate the area where we would be building our climate battery. Luckily, we had the help of a great local business, Gray's Limited. They were very knowledgeable and they were careful, which was a good thing because we found some of the electrical for our field sprinklers as soon as we started going. Uh, they dug down four feet for us and we're hoping that this will bring us below most of the frost so that's easier for us to keep all the heat we store up inside of the growing dome itself. We opted to go with a two foot wide by eight inch thick circular footing. Uh, Burnco was such a great supporter of community projects and they really helped us out on the concrete side, uh, which gave us the ability to start with something level and easy to work on. Dave and Matt from MB Contracting, another great local company, helped us with all of our foundation work. It was important for us to be precise as our dome is 15 sided and all the corners need to be in the right place. They formed the footing with plywood and wooded stakes with horizontal and vertical rebar so we could connect the foundation wall itself to the footing. They opted to wheelbarrow the concrete into the forms and then we just had to wait a bit for it to set. Once we had the footing, MB cut and stacked our ICF wall. We went with ICF to insulate our inner thermal mass from the outside. One trade-off is that by having the inner layer of insulation, we lose the thermal mass of the concrete as possible heat storage. However, we did build our climate battery pretty low and are thinking that we might be able to utilize the footing, which is not insulated. We are excited to see how this goes and we'll definitely be designing some experiments uh, that will allow us to track the temperature of the foundation wall itself throughout the winter months. Once MB formed the ICF wall, we ended up with what was a work of art. It took a lot of time because almost every block had to be cut. I thought cutting the angles like 156 and 159 degrees would be annoying and need a ton of precision. However, MB's solution was pretty good. Uh, they chalked out the entire foundation wall first and then they just had to fill the lines as they went. This did still mean a lot of cutting and time the inside of the blocks are tied together with these plastic bits and the potential weakness as they were building it was always going to be the corners. What MB did was they reused the plywood from our footing forms to support the corners and they were then able to tie them together with metal straps and they braced the inside corners with 2x4s. These 2x4s were staked to the ground uh, so they gave us some support both ways, both in and, and out and they, they finished off the wall by spray foaming any gaps. Burnco then came with a pump and placing crew and we were able to pour the foundation wall without any problems. Once we had all that done, our students were able to get to work. We started by removing the bracing, and, and this is kind of cool, but Josh, our kind of de facto foreman, turned these into raised beds for around the growing dome. Kind of cool that this plywood was used for the footing, then reused for bracing, and then finally we'll make some handy raised beds, uh, which we're hoping will kind of house a bunch of different berry bushes. Our students were drilling four inch holes in our 12 inch pipe as the foundation was being formed and poured. Once we had access to the interior, we laid out the 12 inch manifolds and then ran the bottom layer of our four inch weeping tile. These runs aren't straight and, and that's for a reason because the length is important. The time that the air is in the pipe is important for the heat transfer and so this means that the runs need to be between 25 to, to 35 feet long. We used a couple of couplers to connect the four inch to the manifolds and then we used some tape to hold everything in place uh, and we also taped the top layer of the manifold so that we won't end up filling everything with dirt kind of as we went. Our students also added the elbows and end caps and the vertical parts of our manifold. 
Because we used irrigation fittings, because they were cheaper, uh, we had a quarter inch that we had to fill, and, and we ended up filling this with construction glue and some gap filler, uh, and then we taped it. The students made sure that everything was level, and then used some two by fours from our foundation wall bracing to actually brace those vertical bits for when we were actually backfilling. With the climate battery built, it was then time to fill everything in. We cannot say enough about Grays and all that they do in our community. Uh, the day that they ended coming up out here was pretty ugly, uh, but they still came out uh, and even helped us out with some gravel. Uh, they laid gravel around the lower level of the four inch to help support it and then backfilled the clay, sand, dirt stuff that we had taken out. When they got halfway up, we flipped the top layer of four inch over the top and then connected it to the manifold on the other side. Then they popped some gravel on the coupler joints and around that layer of four inch before backfilling close to the top uh, with all the clay, dirt, sand stuff. They then finished the, the top six inches of our growing dome with this gravel and after bringing the outside up to grade, this is where we're at. We now have this blank slate for how we're going to actually design our grow beds, how we want that layout to work uh, for something that's going to be functional for all the different community groups that are going to be participating. Uh, we definitely want to recognize Inside Education uh, and APEGA uh, for the grants that they gave uh, in order to help support this kind of energy climate battery side of our project. Without those grants, we couldn't have kind of incorporated this, but it, it gave our students a really great chance to investigate a bit when it comes to energy storage, the power of the earth when it comes to energy storage, and actually being able to build it on our own. If you're interested in kind of what we're doing and want to follow along, make sure you check out uh, and subscribe down below because uh, we're going to have lots of other stuff coming as we continue to build this growing dome into a space that the community can use year-round. Awkward!